Oh. Yes, we are indeed. Chrisan coming in with a perfect war already. This is what the weekend has been all about. This moment right here, right now. The final war of the fourth qualifier. Who's going to get that golden ticket and earn their place in the world finals? Let's take a look. Death will be the first attacker from Indian Clashers, a squad that was undefeated in the group stage, having trounced Tribe Gaming in a close match off the backs of players like Death. He picked up a three-star in the first match against the Silent Snipers and is looking to do it again in style. Those 10 mass drags, gonna get some backup with bats as well on the backside. Only five bat spells, a little bit dry on that side, instead choosing to go for some extra damage with a lightning and earthquake. Yes, an interesting move, Woody. He obviously feels he wants to get deeper into the base with the dragons and have a little bit of a less priority on the bats. We will see probably less defenses for them to take out as it looks like the royal champion at the top of the base slams through the single target inferno and the wizard tower draws out the clan castle troops as well which could be a good thing here if he can draw it to the side of the base away from the dragons and let's remember the grand final will mean everything the winner gets the golden ticket and the loser is out Tricky triangulation from death of the Indian Clasher, sending his heroes far and wide around this base. An isosceles triangle now squished flat. And we'll see soon if these dragons have got it in them to make it toward the backside. Still have got a single target Inferno up, and that could be trouble for them. A battle blimp coming on in and an early pop of the Warden's ability, Judo. Indeed, it tries to protect the battle blimp through, actually soaks up a couple of the black bombs, which is very key to help the dragons. Now he's hoping that this town hall goes down with the troops that are inside. It looks like it does. The sneaky goblins getting the job done. And as the dragons charge through the bottom area of the base, hopefully the bats can swoop around the left, get towards the single target inferno before the dragons get there. It's all down to the wizard tower in the center of the base, Woody. That's crashing into Tesla's, and that's going to be an issue for them if they can't finish off this Warzer Tower Ooh. in time. Oh, they barely did it, Judo! They did, and he saved the freeze spell, Woody, which means he can use that for the single and the air defense with the dragons. But with 30 seconds, it's all about time. He decides to use it on the Infernal Dragons. You can't help but think that with the Clan Castle troops at the start of the attack running everywhere, it really has made a mockery of his attack and he just hasn't been able to recover from that. Wow, what an unfortunate turn of events for Death here. A player who seemed on path to get the triple, but is now running out of time. An air defense and single target Inferno, the two things you don't want to go up against as a dragon army. And without any more bats to finish that section off, that is going to be it. Those Tesla traps from Michael DP on defense might have stopped the bats dead in their tracks. And Death from Indian Clashers will have to be satisfied with a two-star 89%. Indeed they will. It was a valiant effort. Such a good attack. I really liked the plan. But as you mentioned, Woody, the Tesla are incredibly fast. And with the bats, it is all about either splash damage or speed. That is why an air defense is not good against bats because it's very slow. It might do a lot of damage, but the bats have such low hit points that it really doesn't matter. The Tesla can take them out even quicker. And that's why it was such a key move to have the Tesla farm on that side out of the base by existence but here we go now if they get the three star they take the advantage in the grand final woody if he's zapping him out of the sky as we all know electricity is super effective against flying and those bats just could not hold on but the attack here from metro is going to be hard and fast and in the archer queen already locking on to the attacker of his own but metro doesn't have to use the ability early on great rage spell timing and positioning there to keep those healers on task the air sweepers are facing the other way so they'll be able to stay locked onto that healer for a very long time another rage spell to top it off and she'll grab a scatter shot as well Beautiful read from Metruo, gaining maximum value from this huge charge. Maximum value is the best way to put this. And Woody, the Queen even took out two giant bombs, which means for a ground-based attack such as the hybrid, that is massive. We have the funnel getting set up with the Barbarian King to the top right of your screen and the Hogs and Miners now coming into the Town Hall. He has a clear path through the base and with two heal spells, two free spells and the Grand Warden's ability. This looks good for existence. 
This queen charge is on a royal rampage. Three expos locked onto her, but she's gonna have none of it. Healers have topped her off, and finally a skeleton trap coming out might cause a little bit of problems for her, but that Grand Warden protecting the hogs out the right side are gonna be just what the doctor ordered. Facing off against two multi-target infernos on the rear side of the base. That's still a lot of splash damage, but so many perfectly placed heal spells. I think he's done it. Metro's looking for three stars and he won't go home happy without anything short of that. He has stepped up his performances today, Woody. He didn't get a single three star throughout Friday and Saturday. Brought in the three star when it was needed against Tribe Gaming. And he is ever so close to the second three star today. Things are going down fast, but he still has the queen with the healers. And 45 seconds to finish off this base. It's all whether the queen can get through the wall quick enough doing her best to crack through it, but that max level wall won't go down easy. Finally finds her way onto a few more defenses, but just like you said, Judo, it's all about the DPS. Can she stack it in on so many structures still standing? 12% separates her from victory, and with the Barbarian King, the last line of defense, he won't be able to take her down, but he'll slow her down just enough, gumming up the works and denying Metuo the three star. He'll be able to grab a few more buildings, and that should bring the percentage destruction for existence above that of Indian Clashers, but they won't get the triple they were looking for here. Indeed, it will pull them ahead in this war, but it's not what they wanted. They really wanted an opening three star and they were ever so close, Banks. Yes, they were. 5% per average destruction separates these two clans in the final of the fourth live qualifier. This is huge. This is going to be a monumental final and I just cannot wait to see what the remaining attacks have in store for us, Woody. We have got some amazing hits coming up shortly. You know the pressure is built up so highly on both of these teams right now. The Indian Clashers, the pride of the subcontinent, making it to the grand finals for the very first time up against an existent squad that has been to the world finals last year, representing Team Queso, and now transition to this existence team. They are doing a fantastic job tearing through really tough competitors, the likes of which we have not seen before. Tribe Gaming eliminated in the semi is another big gravestone standing in the yard set up by existence. But they're going to have to hold on for defense this time. Rigo Torres' base is being attacked by 11. They are going up against the almighty Indian Clashers, so this one can certainly go either way. Eleven, we have talked about being the MVP for Indian Clashers, so they obviously feel if they can get a three-star early on in the war, then it could really put the pressure on existence and give them the mental advantage. Rigor Torres himself talks about how mental strength is what you need in the Clash of Clans World Championships. Now, for this attack with Eleven, Woody, he's thinned out the top area of the base has some super wall breakers and it looks like he might be driving his queen away from the town hall to then bring the hogs and miners directly into it interesting choice here instead of stabbing deep in he's going to get a lot more damage done on the outer edges taking out another hero as she engages the enemy royal champion that's good news for those hog riders that will not target onto enemy heroes until all the defenses are down but of course because this is a hybrid army those two uh, troops, the hogs oh, and the miners are going to partner up and we'll be able to engage anything. What are you watching, Judo? Oh, he used the super wall breaker when the builder hut was still up. That caused the super wall breaker to go to the wrong compartment. Had he have waited until that went down, the super wall breaker may have targeted the grand warden or the royal champion altar, sorry, down to the bottom. That has led to the archer queen getting locked onto by the single, needing the ability, but I don't think he has to worry too much here, Woody, because the hybrid is in, it takes down the town hall, and it does have good force moving through the base here. It looks good for Indian Clashers. That royal cloak from the Archer Queen, just enough to keep her alive to crack through that compartment and goes directly for the Inferno Tower right afterwards. Eleven is looking on track for success right now as the Hogs and Miners are steering clear on most of the traps. A giant bomb goes off, but that won't stop him. Another one explodes. They are going off left and right. Defenses from Rigo Torres aren't going to give up without a fight, but Eleven from Indian Clashers is moving into the final countdown. He is counting off the numbers as those last remaining defenses are ripped apart and that is it three stars for 11 
of Indian Clashers. He primes the base, sets his iPad down, and just celebrates, watches the troops finish off the rest of the buildings, and Indian Clashers take the lead in the grand final. Wow, Woody, this one is interesting now, because existence fall behind for the first time throughout this weekend's qualifier. What a shocking turn of events as Existence have yet to keep pace against an Indian Clasher squad that has now picked up the first triple in this war. 11 from Indian Clasher. has got to be so proud of his performance here and now. They dropped in the semis, but the DQ led them on. And with that win here and now against one of their biggest opponents that they've ever faced off against, they have got to be feeling proud about that showing. They certainly do. With a three-star so early on in the war, you've got to think that Indian Clashers can continue that on moving through. But remember, existence, as you mentioned, Woody, they came third in the Clash of Clans World Championships under Team Queso last year. So we know they have got a lot of talent. We know they can come back from situations when they are behind. And it is Michael DP, one of the most experienced attackers of X6 that they send forward to try and get them back into this wall. Not only are they experienced, the veterans of this World Championship Month, they are also undefeated, having trounced Nolex and defeated the sister clan of Indian Clashers, the Dark Tangent. Indian Clashers on defense this time, holding on against a Michael DP hybrid army, charging in with a queen supported with those healers as always she pulls out the cc and will engage them now with a poison spell to boot don't see any inferno dragons in that cc yet not sure if that's a complete pull or if uh he got everything uh, right off the bat but gotta be happy with how things are starting off here there's the dragon to finish off the pull yeah, exactly. Didn't get the full CC pull, as you mentioned. There was also a headhunter in there, but fortunately the queen takes down the headhunter first. You've got to admire the king here, driving into the base. He's taken out a heck of a lot of the base towards the left-hand side, Woody, which means the queen can now drive straight into the scatter shot to the center with the expos and create the pathing for the hybrid. But I do note that the archer queen and single target inferno to the left-hand side of the base will definitely be dangerous for this archer queen. Yeah, huge roadblocks, and it all comes down to the positioning of this Archer Queen as she makes her way toward that top compartment. She really wants to pull that enemy Archer Queen out and finish her off lickety split. That Seagull Target Inferno could be a problem for her, but they won't cause much trouble for the Hogs and Miners on the backside. It's only that Queen that could be troublesome. He's going to pop the ability, and that's going to give him an easy access over there, but at what cost? That Seagull Target Inferno is already locked on, and she is not locked for this world, Judo. He uses the free spell to try and adapt. Will it be enough to keep the queen through oh, and a rage. the rage spell as well but misses the healers woody they move on in he wants to keep that queen alive obviously feels the hybrid needs the archer queen as it moves through he's on for a good shot here woody the tornado trap does have a lot of the troops though and they are struggling to get to the multi-target inferno but michael dp does have a lot of hogs and miners moving through this base i think he's got it woody i can't take it any longer is he going to get it the Archangel of Destruction, Michael, has done it! Makes his way through the base in one of the most impressive hybrid army attacks I have ever seen. The three prongs stabbing deep into the beast, slaying the serial killer, Banks. Talk about adapting on the fly. Michael DP from Existence managing to bag that triple, referred to by his teammates as Michael OP quite frequently because he manages to just get that triple out of nowhere. Having said that, coming into today, Eleven was one of Indian Clash's strongest hitters. However, after dropping that percentage in the opening semi-final, it kind of looked as though he had maybe, the nerves had got the better of him. And now he's refocused and he managed to secure that triple for Indian Clash's, keeping them in this final judo. Well, it's anybody's game, isn't it, Banks? We now see that Indian Clashers, they have the performance to put on the three stars in the final. They have picked themselves up over that semi-final. They move on to even better things now with the final, getting the three stars early on rather than the final attack where they achieved the three stars in the semi-finals. So let's see how many they can put on the board. It is Drag Woody, and this is a man who has got numerous three stars throughout this tournament. Oh, one, sorry, I do apologize.
their comrades slain by existence and suffering a terrifying defeat at the hands of that last attacker dragged from Indian Clashers shouts remember the Alamo seeking revenge against an existence squad that is dominant so far in this matchup a bigger percentage destruction and grabbing three stars on pace against the Indian Clashers drag now needs to pull it all on the line the very last war of the day and that queen has been taking a big pounding so far she certainly has. The Barbarian King did a very good job getting into the base, taking the Scattershot and the Royal Champion, but he pulled a couple of the Headhunters, and that has been major for the heroes because they have gone down. The Headhunters move across, and the Dragons, they have to take them down now, which they do, but we know there is something else in the Clan Castle. Will it be dangerous for the Dragons, or will it not even be pulled out? Let's find out as the Dragons move through. He needs majority of the base remember for the bats to then swoop around the outside they push on through and the battle blimp is beelining to the town hall woody a rallying cry from the Grand Warden, shouting the ancient words from his storied tome, protecting the battle blimp as it makes its way directly to the town hall, and the sneaky goblins that pop out will get the job done, ripping it apart for the second star, and here come the bats, storming through the right corner of the base. They've gotten very little to worry about. Just a wizard tower could shut them down. That's what's going to require that free spell, but they won't go path forward directly to it. That's going to be trouble for drag. It will, and I can't help but think he used the freeze spell just a little bit too early. It wouldn't have mattered anyway, because as you mentioned, the bats have moved away, but they will come back down to the wizard tower, and that's when he could have used the freeze spell. The dragons go down, the bats are vulnerable, and Indian clashers will not be pulling in the three star. They also lower the average percentage here, Woody, which means existence can pull their lead even further with their next attack. Furious force from the Indian Clashers. Drag slips up though and dragging his heels on the ground finds just a two star. Pushing at 80% higher and higher though with additional buildings sniped along the edges of the map. The Indian Clashers are down but they're not out by any means. That percentage will still stay above the 90% mark and that's going to really keep existence at the peak of their game if they want to take out a squad with so many fans cheering and supporting them. In the chat, let us know who are you rooting for? Indian clashers in existence in the fight for their lives. The last battle of this war will find one team with a golden ticket and one team sit packing. And what a battle it is, Woody. Existence now with the opportunity to take an even greater lead. We've seen how impressive they were in their semi-final matchup against Tribe Gaming. It looked like they got right into their groove, putting in numerous three stars, getting the job done confidently, and they hope to continue that momentum into the final here against Indian Clashers. It is Al Allen that is going to be attacking with the Dragons himself, but can he exchanged this one to the three stars. Shuts down that top compartment with lightning fast efficiency. Earthquake spells as well to annihilate those defenses. Almolan has brought the Dragons once again, a favorite of this team, and bringing a lot of rage to back him up as well. Two of them in tow with triple freeze. Those free spells are going to be very effective against single target infernos on the backside. They can burn up dragons lickety split and Almolan is clearly focused on the late game for this push. You can see the benefit of sending in balloons ahead of the dragons. Much like when we send a coconut balloon ahead of healers, he does exactly the same here in front of the dragons because the balloon is five troop capacity, whereas the dragon is 20, and he managed to take down two black bombs, but one of them does find the dragons. But he's got a strong push moving through the base here, Woody. Clear pathing moving in, but the dragons have still got a big job ahead of them. He is holding on to the royal champion as long as he can to try and use her at the perfect opportunity but I'm not sure that he does have enough to get through the center with the scatter shot and the single target inferno. Archer Queen met 
a skeleton trap on the top compartment, but was barely able to take it out. Really great heads up play from Al Molin, dropping a free spell that I'm not sure what's necessary, but got the job done nonetheless. Still, that free spell will come in handy as well at the bottom. That last single target Inferno, the big line of defense holding off Al Molin from the three star he has so desperately sought. Grand Warden backing up the Dragons, takes out the single target, and it's just a scatter shot now, firing away at the skies. The Dragons have done so much damage and have a minute for cleanup, but this is going to be tight against a scatter shot. The doom defense of this base. Salim holding his breath, but can he keep it together? I don't think there's a good shot. It looks like Amul has got it, Judo. Unless there is a black bomb, Woody, hiding in the center of the base that could just pop off the dragon at the right opportunity. Here we go. There's a red one. It doesn't quite get the dragon. And the Grand Warden is helping out. There's the scatter shot, but the dragon can get in range of it momentarily. It moves across. Is there a black bomb? Here we go. Oh, it's a red one. bomb. The dragon gets in, Woody. It will be able to finish this one off. But where is the remaining? There's the black bomb. Oh, oh no. Word. Can the Grand Warden do it now? It's a race against the clock. The black bomb might have just saved this base. 15 seconds left, and it's all about how much damage has been dealt to that elixir storage. Well, he gets one strike. 10 seconds. We are counting down. The Grand Warden is doing what he needs to do, Woody. A couple of more hits. There it is. The three stars existence and they take the lead even further now banks with the star and the percentage yes indeed and while in managing to secure that triple in style right down to the wire and those are the kind of attacks that we love to see in the final of this qualifier it's looking it's looking positive for existence so indian clashes are really gonna have to dig deep and bring something special in these last two attacks woody they have got their work cut out for them, Banks. But man, what a huge showing so far. Even with a razor close margin of victory, the Grand Warden gets the job done and holding on to that big old Tesla tower zaps through the last two storages. It was just the little bit of additional damage dealt to that elixir storage that got the Grand Warden close enough to finish it off when it was all said and done. I gotta hand it to him. Existence are a team well deserving of this spot in the world finals and clenching victory with only two more hits left. Let's see if Salim can hold on for the Indian Clashers, a squad that needs a six pack to happen here and now. He needs to get the job done in this attack, like you said, Woody. This could mean that Indian Clashers give themselves too high of a mountain to climb, moving into the last attack. So let's see, can Salim do it? He's used the Yeti Blimp to take down the scatter shot, also draw out the Clan Castle troops, and that sets up pathing for his Archer Queen. With the Warbreaker now busting up the compartment, the Queen can directly target the Town Hall. This is exactly what Salim wanted. The plan is working perfectly at the moment, but will it continue as we move to the next phase of this attack? Starting off a bit slow here, but he's got a plan to make it happen. Eight hog riders and 14 miners in this hybrid army. He actually has two more super wall breakers, so he could very well crack into a few more layers of the outer compartment. But as we've said before, you want to see that big wave of destruction come on in at the one minute mark. Salim is really biding his time, hoping to crack through a lot of defenses in the top side to give those hogs and miners the opening that they need. But let's hope this is not Casey at the bat. He's got to swing now and go for the fence a home run is all that Salim needs, and nothing short of it will be enough to keep the Indian Clashers in contention. Beautiful deployment of the hybrid at this moment because the Expos are locked onto the Archer Queen. It means the hybrid can move on through without being targeted. And likewise, it actually helps the Archer Queen to get through that area. So brilliant recognition of Salim of the Indian Clashers as the hybrid moves through. The Archer Queen survives, keeps her ability as well, Woody, which could be huge. And we also have the Royal Champion. With her ability, the hybrid just has to get a few more buildings through the center and he might just get this one but we are into the final minute 
Yo ho! The pirate warden sings his song and the eternal tone protects the hogs and miners from a massive barrage of bullets. The eagle artillery has been eliminated and a single target inferno is going to start locking on to a queen. She'll pop it down with the help of those miners and still hasn't used her ability yet. What a showing. There it goes. Finally off. Selene has only got a few more miners left though and it looks like they're going down. I don't know if he can clinch this one, Judo. I'm not too sure. He has a balloon, but no Notice the air defense there as well. It's preventing him from using the balloon to any great value. Time will be too much. As you said, Woody, the queen charge was very lengthy. It was fantastically done, but it just left the attack a little bit short towards the end here. He still has a freeze. He can keep the percentage high for Indian clashers, I mean they still have a chance moving to the final attack, but existence could make this one the win. Which with their next attack if they were to three star. Tragedy for Salim, the time fail when they needed the triple the most. Existence, just like you said, Judo, have an opportunity to clinch it here and now. A squad that has not been shy to put three stars up on the board, even against the most impressive clans. They have earned a spot in the grand finals and just need two more battles to get them to the world championships. You have got to be fearful if you're a team waiting at the top, watching Existence rip through these bases like a hot knife through butter another hybrid army coming on in with some additional backup that's like a whole kitchen sink he's gonna throw at it there a hunter a headhunter a yeti a couple of wizards and loons super wall breakers to crack through creason has got a master plan and it's unfolding right before our eyes now he sure does he is perfect so far throughout the tournament three attacks three triples he needs it now to really make sure existence will move through he starts off with the light spell earthquake and the royal champion's ability takes out the single target inferno away from any skeleton traps now what that does is allow the archer queen to take down the clan castle troops free from any defenses you see the skeleton trap popping now which would have been dangerous around the single target inferno but the main thing here woody is time it is taking him a long time to get through the clan castle and we just saw from the previous attack that it was indeed a time fail this is going to be a really tricky hit for Creason. Great use of the miner there to help support that queen taking out that enemy headhunter. But like you've noted, even if you can adapt on the fly, you're going to run short on time if you have to make all these little adjustments here and there. Creason has got to put it all on the line here and now. Targeting that enemy eagle artillery and archer queen has got to be the last thing that this hero charge can do before he deploys the main force of the army. Siege Barracks has been dropped up to the left corner, and that's where we're going to see the additional funneling here. Expect to see that big hybrid coming in at the 8 o'clock position as they move toward the town hall. First and foremost, that's going to be their main target. Archer Queen still on a rampage through the center of the base. Multiple point defenses firing away at her, but a rage spell could keep her topped off. No! Forced to use that ability, Judo incredible queen charge i love the use of a couple of miners in towards the storages at six o'clock woody that is because the expo the only defense in that area was locked onto the queen that will help with time massively which we have said is such a key thing but look at the hybrid moving through the left hand side of the base there is a lot of hogs and miners they close towards the remaining splash defenses and he might just get this one he's out of spells he needs to hope the miners get this multi and Fast in order to help his troops to the final part of this raid. He could get it, Woody. 30 seconds. It is super close. It's all on the line right here. A Tesla farm pops out, and that's a terrifying sight for Krizon. His force is withering away, but holding on for dear life. 23 seconds left, and the cleanup could be just enough here and now. Map the floor with them, existence. You've got it in the bag. Toss it away and finish off these last few buildings. Three stars are in sight, and he's got him clenched tight in his fist. He has pretty much guaranteed their victory and golden ticket now, Banks. Indian clashes would require a mistake from existence in their final attack.
Yes, they would. And it's very important to highlight right now that Chrisan from Existence has had a perfect qualifier, only managing to only getting triples throughout this entire weekend. What an incredible performance by that individual, really managing to potentially secure the victory for Existence. Like you said, Judo, something drastically wrong is going to have to happen in these next two attacks. Indeed, well, all Indian Clashes can do is put up a three star of their own. That would take them to 12 stars, and then existence would need to fail. We have seen uh, worse things happen, but Indian Clashes can only try their best now. Krizan may very well be the new MVP of a world's qualified team. This has got to be the name on everyone's mind. Back to back to back triples. Hats off to you, my friend. You might have single-handedly carried them through even before the fifth attack goes off. Krizan has got to be very proud with how he's done here during this month. But let's hand it back to Serial Killer from the Indian Clashers. They have got a little bit left to say. This guy has been able to put up three stars when his team needed it most up against Dark Tangent in the semis. He picked up the only three star for his squad. They could very well grab a total of 12 if he gets it here and now. Well, he is on point today, isn't he? We've seen that phenomenal queen charge in his previous attack, taking out almost half of the base. And let's remember, Woody, he clutched the attack, got the required percentage against Tribe Gaming. So this is a man with bags of talent within Clash of Clans, and he has to put up a three-star now to give Indian Clashers any fighting chance. The Yetis and Bowlers are moving straight into the base. He has a fantastic funnel set up, and he just has to hope that they get through here quick enough. Tony the Tiger shaking in his boots as a serial killer comes out on the loose. Indian Clashers make their way right into the gooey core of this space with a jump spell to hurdle over these walls. Bowlers are on a rampage tossing those rocks and knocking through the town hall for the first star. A scatter shot is lying limp on the floor with even more damage stacked on top. The heroes for this charge still going strong. Judo, he might go all the way. He might the bats come through. Oh, he freezes the wizard tower. Perfectly timed there, Woody. I can't believe the nerve he had to save the free spell until the final sound. Oh, but he misses the next one. And the scatter shot wipes out half of the bats. He might still get this due to how efficient he has been with the rest of the attack. One minute remains. Royal champion's ability. Can she get through the final defenses, Woody? The last layers of the base firing on all cylinders. RC goes for the mortar instead of the single target Inferno. And that is disaster for Serial Killer. Two Yeti mites jumped towards the single target Inferno, but it just wasn't enough to take it down. Now we do have Yeti mites in the basket of the Yetis at the top of the base, but with time ticking down, Woody, I'm not sure that he has enough time to get through the rest of the base. It is a fantastic attack, but it does mean that Existence are one step further, and surely they are going to be this month's golden ticket winners. This is such a long march for Serial Killer. Stutter step Yetis doing their best to stay on task, but how far can we expect them to go? They finally made it to the bottom compartment. A minion and Grand Warden shot eliminate the single target Inferno, but it's done its job. Oh, Hold on for a little bit longer. Take a shot! Electric Collector, the last oh. remaining building, and it stands! The skeleton trap right at the end, Woody, really put the nail in the coffin. It meant they didn't have enough time to get the final building 99%. What more could Indian Clashers do? But it does mean that Existence already with 11 stars and 98%, they just need to put a good percentage on the board. They might not even need a star in order to win this war. I don't think they do. Just get that percentage high enough and yeah. they stay higher. But if you do take out the town hall or grab 50%, that'll be enough for 12 stars to come over the top. We'd expect nothing less from a world's qualified team that has been there before and is looking to go there again. Their eyes are on the prize and this is the last leg standing in their way. Get ready to knock it apart. The final attacker, the MVP, the captain, the master of the existence squad, Regal Torres, 20
23 is here. He only needed the two stars against Tribe Gaming in the semi-finals, but he went all of the way getting the three stars and showing us how good existence are. Now, can he do the same again to finish off in style, give existence the golden ticket and be the fourth seed to this year's world championships? Here he comes, Woody, with the Grand Warden from the north of the base. Looks like he's carving out that funnel, ready for him his yetis and he has his eyes on the town hall just secure the victory even if he gets a star they will progress now that's right a single 50 percent hit or the town hall going down will get it done rigo torres starting off slow a little bit coy maybe taking out some buildings and now transferring the grand warden off of that early walk to support the bulk of this raid jump spell is down and that's an easy access down to the town hall walking down to easy street they've made it through the avenue but since the troop comes out battle blip on the town hall it crashes in and there there it goes! The one star claim and existence will go to the World Finals! Rigor Torres, the team captain, who else would it be to finish off the job? He gets the two star. He wants to wrap up in style, Woody, because he is moving through this base incredibly fast. Queen's ability, Royal Champion's ability, over a minute left, and I think he has his eyes on the prize. The three star, the entire cake. Let's take it all and make sure that the rest of the teams feel existence moving into the world finals vamos existence rigo torres the captain of the team has got to be patting backs and clapping so hard right now for a squad that has championed the spanish community and will once again represent them on the main stage a million dollar prize event has got their name on it they're ready to claim it all and with the cleanup for this final base have even got another shot at a 14 star win can they get it done, Judo? The Yetis have tried their best. The Grand Warden locked onto the wrong building. If only he had have took down the single target Inferno, I think it would have been a guarantee. But now with 20 seconds, no Yeti mites left. He will get the high percentage two star. Riga Torres does not mind. Existence are going to be your golden ticket, Woodies. They move on through. And what a performance it was today. Existence with the overwhelming force. They took a look at Indian Clashers and said, I like you cut, G, and smacked them back down. Return to the qualifiers, Indian Clashers, for Existence or the squad to move on.